Assalamualaikum. In this section, we will be looking at chain rules or chain rule for functions of several variables. Let's first recall chain rule for function of one variable. Suppose you had w is a function of x, um, or, or let's say, yeah, let's do this. w is a function of x, and which is a function of e, which is a function of s. Okay? Then if somebody asks you how is, what is dw ds, how we used to compute it, you can think of a diagram here, a chain diagram. W is a function of x, which is a function of t, which is a function of s. And um, chain rule is uh, one of those topics in Calc 1 in calculus 1, which is one of the easiest topics. In fact, it's something you've seen since early days of your childhood. How? Imagine you have the, uh, you know, the rate of change of population of Ifran uh, with respect to uh, time, right? But let's say if you were given the information in terms of how the, the, the population of Ifran is changing uh, as a function of number of houses, or number of families, and how the size of each family, assuming all families are the same size, how the size of family itself is changing with respect to time. So if you want to find the rate of change of population of the city with respect to time, you multiply its rate with respect to the unit house, and then the rate of how the rate house or family size itself is changing with respect to time, right? You multiply the two rates. So you multiply, you have dw dx here, right? In this relationship, you have dx dt, and you have dt ds and so you will get dw ds is dw dx times dx dt times dt ds right this is what you know you learned in calculus is chain rule all right, now, so let's take a concrete setup uh, as functions of several variables and see how we do that. The only difference that will change here is that instead of a, a single chain, you now would have a tree. Let's see an example. You have w, let's say the function of x and y. And each x is a function of t. x is a function of t and y is a y is a function of t. Okay? So x and y themselves uh, have a relationship with let's say another variable. t could be time, could be something else. Then if somebody asks you, uh, the question is, okay, if I were to express, you know, w as a function of x of t and y of t, and once I have written everything in terms of t and plug it into f, think of it as just a function of t. w is just a function of t. And so the correct symbol to use would be what is dw? d t. Okay? What's the rate of change of w with respect to t? Alright, to do this well, draw a diagram, a tree diagram. You have w here. It's a function of x and y. And x is a function of t. Y is a function of t, right? W is a function of x and y. X is a function of t, y is a function of t. <clears throat> what you do is much like this, but you accumulate, we want the rate of change of w with respect to t. It will be accumulation of rate of change of w respect to t along this branch and along this branch. So this thing would equal dw dt would equal dw dx okay, times dx dt plus dw dy times dy dt. 
The reason I have used the sim curly symbol here, the curly D symbol, the differential symbol, is because W is a function of two variables. So saying DW DX means, okay, I'm taking this variable as my uh, variable with, with, with respect to which I'm taking the derivative, but Y should stay constant. But X is only a function of C, T, so it should be straight Ds, DX, DT, and plus. So you will go this path, you will accumulate the rate of change with respect to this, the rate of change with respect to this. Okay? Um, let's do a concrete example to see how that works. Let's say uh, W is, as a function of xy is xy squared minus y. Okay? And x is a function of t is 2t plus 1. And y is a function of t is p squared. Alright? So what this is saying is that dw dt would be dx dt uh, dx oh, sorry. dw dx times dx dt plus dw dy times dy dt. Okay? So how do we do that? Alright, the rate of change of w with respect to x, when I take the derivative with respect to x here, this is just y squared and this is a 0. So it's just y squared, right? dx dt is just 2 and plus dy, dw dy. dw dy is 2xy minus 1. 2xy minus 1 times dy dt which is 2t ok and what we can do now we can go ahead and actually since we are asking dw dt it would be nice and polite of us to give the answer in terms of just t's right we want to think of what's the rate of change of w with respect to just t's so what is y square? well y is t square so this will be t square square which is 4 so we t 2 times 2t 4 plus I replace x with 2t plus 1 and y with t square and you know you do the, the thing what you'll get you have multiply this with this you get 4t times x which is 2t plus 1 well, let's do this 4t times 2t plus 1 times y which is uh, t square right plus 2t times this minus just 2t ok and uh, you can combine the terms right now this will be 2t4 plus 8t 4t cubed 8t4 8t4 plus 4t cubed minus 2t ok Let's check if this is correct. Now you might be wondering how should we check this? Well, we can express W in terms of T and then we can check it. So, W is x, y squared minus y. If I want to express it, so W as a function of T would be I replace everything in terms of T. So it would be x which is 2t plus 1 times y square, which will be t to the power of 4, minus just y, which is t square. So what do I get? I get uh, 2t to the power of 5 plus t to the power of 4 minus t square. Okay? Now when I do dw dt, Right? I just take the derivative of this function with respect to t. So this is 10 t to the power 4 plus 4 t cubed minus 2 t. And indeed, I had that, right? I didn't combine it fully. 2 t 4 plus 8 t 4 is 10 t 4. 4 t cubed is right here, minus 2 t. Okay? This is not magic, this is mathematics. 
All right. So this shows you that this is indeed the correct, uh, a correct, uh, the correct formula for how you will um, calculate the rate of change of W with respect to T. Uh, you accumulate all the all its rates of change through the different paths. Okay, in the tree diagram. In the next video, we'll look at a few more examples along these lines.